All right, well, welcome to episode two of Barbershop Talk, presented by Red Stag Barbershop. I'm here uh, with Ryan Lund, Kevin Strybosch, the athlete, at Red Stag in Capstone. Our special guest today is Mike Yarjo, the mayor of Penhold. And I guess the first question is, yeah, like, how do we, how do we address you? Is it your worship, your majesty? Just, sir? just Mike is fine. The kids in town call me Mayor Mike. Uh, but I'm fine with just Mike. I'm happy with that. What's going on, just Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of hard hitting questions you can uh, expect tonight. But hey, let's start with a hard hitting one. Uh, the, how's Penhold? Penhold's good. We're uh, a growing little community. Um, our, our average age, I always, I always tell people this in, in Penhold, we're about 34 years old. So we're one of the youngest communities in central Alberta. We grow not only by building new houses every year, but we grow internally because we have so many young families in the community. Um, our elementary schools are overflowing. We're, we're building a new school right now. Um, so that's exciting. We're, we're happy. Uh, we're doing a ton of work around our recreation facility where the new school is going with some trails and walking trails and some ponds in there. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. Some, some great things happening. Lots of procreation happening in Penhold, hey? <laughs> I might have to move there. If you've, <laughs> yeah. you've sold me. <laughs> You're too old. Yeah, I know. It's average age 34. Me and Ted are too. Hey, Kev, you'd bring yeah, down I, that age, yeah? Well, I think that's the average age between the three of us. So if we all moved there, <laughs> yeah, just, we'll be fine. Perfect. Just status quo. But that yeah. is obviously something I've been seeing. I've been in Red Deer almost nine years now. And yeah, Penhold's been been growing and probably a, a pretty appealing place for people who do work in Red Deer and area, right? Just a, a little quieter place, but what, 15 minutes away? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're 10 minutes away from Costco. You know, you're, you're, you're less than 15 minutes away from everything on the south end of town, 20 minutes away from downtown. Um, that's most, most of our community are people that live, or that live in Penhold and, and work in Red Deer or the surrounding communities. Um, it'd be nice if we could change that a bit and get a bit more, a bit more businesses in, in the community, but we're working on that also. But yeah, we're, a, we're a great location for anyone that works in central Alberta. You guys, uh, need a bowling alley in uh, Penhold? <laughs> we absolutely need a bowling alley and, and a brewery wouldn't be bad, but oh, okay. Just combine the two. Whoa, there we go. So I guess, uh, Mike, just Mike, sorry, uh, to take us back to, you said, uh, you've been mayor, you've been basically on council one way or another for about a decade now. Just, I guess, tell us about your journey. Uh, yeah, your decision to go into politics be, and, uh, be on council in Penhold and then uh, run for mayor. So I, I grew up involved in, in politics and involved in the community. I, my parents were both really active. My, my mother was the chairwoman of the school board when I was young. My dad was a town councillor. So it was always sort of taking, being a part of the community was always something that we did in my family. Uh, when I, when I became, when I turned 18, I got a job. I worked, worked on the road for a while. I'm a, I'm a journeyman electrician. So I was up working up North, working in Saskatchewan for a bit all over the place. And then uh, I got a job working working around home all the time. And that sort of changed it. Once I had that time, I, I made the, the effort to get more involved locally. Uh, at the time there were some things happening in the town of Penhold that I thought we could do better. I also didn't really understand what the role of a counselor was at first. So that, that was a big learning curve. Uh, I ran for council, got in, realized quickly that I, I couldn't really change all the things that I wanted to change right away. Uh, and it's a process. So I, I loved my time as a counselor. And I saw an opportunity there uh, to run for mayor, and and here we are now, six years later. So when you when you first decided to run for council or run for mayor, do you remember what you, you were running on? Do you remember what your main platform was? Was it was it one main thing, or was it just a list of things that you were hoping to get done? There was two main things I would say. So the one the one thing um, Penhold historically has had. Uh, higher tax rates than our surrounding communities. And most of that is just because um, we, we don't have the business, the businesses in, in, in Penhold that, that Red Deer has or, or Sylvan Lake and Esfail, all the other communities have. We have a really high residential percentage of our population. We're about, we're, now we're about 91% residential. Um, we were about 97% at wow. one point. So we are getting better, but uh, that was that was the biggest reason, and I am happy to say now that Penhold is at the average 
property tax <laughs> rates in the province. Nice. So we, nice. we, we are not the highest anymore, but we're not, we're not the lowest either. So we've still got some work to do. And the second part was uh, just, I, I felt like Penhold was losing the community when I, I've, I'm born and raised there. So when I grew up, uh, you know, we had minor baseball, we had minor soccer, we had all these, these local sports groups, uh, local community groups that were active in the community. And then as, as my parents got old and their kids got older, and our friends parents got older there was there wasn't a new generation of of people sort of taking taking over those groups and we lost them all uh so it was it was something i wanted to see penhold get back especially because we have such a young community um you know kids kids want their or parents want their kids to be involved in in soccer baseball gymnastics dance any any of those those things right and and we're getting those back too we have those back now in the community so um, that was a really important thing for me. I feel like nowadays too, with, especially with social media, younger people out there have more of a, um, a province wide, countrywide, worldwide view, just because that information is, is so accessible. So do you think, do you think social media is going to help the younger people get involved in politics or do you think it's going to just create a lot of, obviously it's a, it can also be a pretty toxic place. Like, do you, do you think social media is good or, good or bad for, for politics in general? Like, like, like for me, I, I, I guess it depends who you follow and what, and how you act online. But for me, I think it can be used, used for good. I think it can be used for good. It's not being used for good. So, so right now, I mean, you, you talk to, talk to young kids in the, in, in any community. Like and, us. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, no, no they're cap. not paying attention to anything. Right. Because it's. There's so much crap on on Facebook and Twitter. Well, kids aren't on Twitter for one anymore. Um, I I am, but Instagram doesn't have politics, so they're on Instagram. Snapchat doesn't have politics, so they're on Snapchat. Uh, TikTok has some politics, but you don't see it that often. But um, there's there's so many bad things on Facebook. There's so much. I mean, you hear it everywhere, but it's just just lies or or misrepresentations of the truth. Um, I think social media can be a good thing. I know for myself, when I, when I got involved, I was really active on social media. I was talking to people, putting information out there. I, I rarely post stuff now because mm -hmm. I, for you one, can't win. you can't, yeah, yeah. You, you can't win. And I don't find the, I get the feedback that I used to get. Generally, if someone is pissed off, they already know why they're pissed off and there's nothing you can tell them to, to change their mind. Even if you tell them the facts, yeah. um, a lot of times they don't want to, they don't want to know the facts, right? Yes, so will all, especially on Twitter now, politics like have gotten wild. And obviously, you have to probably make your, your job more difficult as a politician in general than not. And I know, too, even now, you don't have to comment on this being in politics, but it, now you have certain people in uh, certain positions of power over a certain province making huge announcements via Twitter. Right. Is that something you ever thought you would see is is social media being the first place that these huge announcements are being made? No, it, it's wild sometimes. I mean, we've found out decisions about the town of Penhold from both the federal and provincial governments <laughs> on social media yeah. before we even knew about them. Right. Like, like a heads up would have been nice. Yeah. Right? yeah like, just, hey, <laughs> like, hey, hey, Mike, we're yeah. going to do this. Well, hey, yeah, it's like getting we, traded and finding out on Sports Center. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we don't get that information. Um, and it's there's a breakdown of, of communication and a breakdown of how things are supposed to work. And I don't know how to fix that. It needs to be fixed, but I don't know how. So, Mike, speaking of the Penhold being a young community, I know uh, we've, I've, we've got an idea of your age, but it, it's hard to pin down. But when it comes to positions, uh, especially like mayor, usually it's someone a little bit older, maybe at the end of their career, they have the, the time to do it. Have you found, I guess, any... Uh, any struggles being a younger mayor, whether it's like uh, people in the community or other mayor, like other people in politics kind of think, oh, that young guy doesn't know what he's doing. Or has it been more, more positive, I guess, especially being in a younger community, being a younger politician? It's been pretty positive. I, I feel like I get treated with respect. I treat people with respect everywhere I go. Um, I, I, I haven't noticed any issues. I, I think I also look a bit older than I am. I mean, having a beard helps. If I didn't have the beard, I'd look like a young, a, a much younger kid. Um, so that's maybe that's why I keep it. I don't know. Um, I, I think to be a young person in politics 
uh, I, I'm self, the, the mayor of Penhold is not a full-time job. So I'm, I'm self-employed. I can make my own schedule and work around it. If you are someone that works a full-time nine to five job, um, you know, to be a counselor is very tough to be the mayor would be, would be incredibly challenging because there are times where you need to be available during the day. Uh, and it's, you, you know, people don't have that, that flexibility. Right. So that's challenging. That's why you see a lot more older mayors out there because especially in small communities, um, these aren't, these aren't full-time jobs. So it's usually someone that is retired and has the time and and no offense, Mayor Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, Mayor Ken has a much busier schedule than I do, I'm sure. And and he's doing a great job too. I'm curious, um, when you decided to run for mayor, I'm kind of more curious on, I guess, the background of that and what goes into like a campaign. We touched on like your platforms, but what do you actually do when you're going around and campaigning and trying to get people to vote for you? So a, a small community would be the the very... Um, it's, it's sort of politics at its most purest, I would say. Basically, you, you fill out a, a nomination form and you put a $100 deposit down. Uh, you get that deposit back if you don't break any of the rules. You have to get five people in the community to sign a, pa a piece of paper um, nominating you to run. And then you, it's up to you what you want to do after that. Some people, fund, you can fundraise. Uh, for myself, in my first campaign, I bought lawn signs and some brochures. And I did that. I think I spent about nine hundred dollars of just my own money in that one. Um, you know, some people spend more, some people spend, don't spend any money. You get into the larger centers, and it becomes much more about money. But in in a small community, it's just the you fill out the form, and then you decide how much work you want to do. And I went out and door knocked on every door in Penhold, talked to people, told them, you know, what I was thinking Penhold could do, um, and listened to them, and I and. And you got to be able to ad adjust too. like local politics is, is different than party politics. You're not you're not coming in so much with a platform. You're 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 coming in um, with a desire to make your community better. And that means you got to take the information in that you receive through through your administration and through council reports that you get and decide what's the best decision to make and what's the way to go forward. It's hard to come into this job saying you know the way forward when you don't even know the information yet what's uh what's been the biggest surprise for you in this uh because this is your sixth year yeah as, as mayor so what's in the, in the last six years is there is there one or two i two things that stand out where you're like wow i did not expect expect that to happen in this this role um surprise there's been a few like municipalities got beat up when they when the federal government legalized cannabis uh, which we had nothing to do with, but we got beat up by it because we had to adjust our land use bylaws to allow for the sale of cannabis. It wasn't it wasn't an option to not allow it. We had to adjust our bylaws to do it. Uh, but people in the community thought we were we were now allowing it to happen. Well, we, we didn't have a choice. We had to do it, uh, and there was a lot of pushback on that that we we just weren't expecting because I had. I didn't legalize cannabis. I had nothing to do with that, right? It's, and we took a lot of blame for that. So that was a that was a challenge, and it was very um, surprising to see the the reaction from some people in the community for sure. You probably take a lot of heat for a lot of things that are that has not like not your fault, right? Because a a lot of like you said, yeah. like the cannabis one's a decision that gets passed down. Or from all my wonderful time covering uh, Okotoks and High River Town Council, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, the mayor still is is one vote on council right but they see the mayor oh how come you can't do this or how come you, you can't do that when really all you can kind of do is advocate for it right and put yeah. it forward and hope the vote goes your way that comes from tv uh, there's too much <laughs> yeah. too yeah. much american tv yeah. and they have a different they have a different system uh, we work on what's called the weak mayor system and they work on the strong mayor system so we really like yeah i am one vote at the table i chair the meetings is is essentially the only difference uh, in my role versus a counselor's role, and and I act as the spokesperson, but I'm one vote the same way as as anyone else on council. That's where I get all my uh, local yeah. political knowledge <laughs> yeah. is is mainly from cartoons. Uh, Mayor <laughs> Mayor Quimby, yeah, uh, and uh, Mayor Adam West, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, those are that's <laughs> yeah, and those guys, yeah, those guys seem pretty powerful. It looks like they had a lot of power in their yeah. cities, but. 
They are, and and we have <clears throat> we have much better mayors in Canada than mm. than those two, <laughs> than the, the cartoon yeah. mayors. That's that's good to know. <laughs> better better people in office than <laughs> than cartoons. Now, my I want to. I'm probably I'm trying to drum up drama where there probably is none. But again, I know Penhold being a, a smaller community, and you work a lot with the other Central Alberta communities. But are you ever? I don't know. I'm just imagining in my head there's like a mayors summit somewhere, something like that. But do you find because there's like there's people out there who just suck do some of the smaller communities get do they have a tougher time having their voice heard or being taken more seriously because again not to like oh i'm the mayor of a city of a million i know more than you or whatever does that ever happen yeah i would say definitely uh, good. there is you know there there is a, a difference between cities and and towns and um some of the cities would rather not be associated with some of the smaller communities, even though at the end of the day, a lot of the things we do are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a perception on, on their part that, you know, they're a bit better than us small town guys. Right. Uh, so that, yeah, that, that's yeah. out there. I meant good that, yeah, good that there's some drama, not good that no, that no. happens to you. <laughs> I think, cause I think that's, that's terrible, but yeah. you do work. Like I have seen, I'm trying to think it wasn't that long ago, right? Was there, it, uh, what was it called? Like a small mayor or a mayor, small town mayor. Co there was something that a bunch of you got together and, and kind of did. So there's, yeah, there's a bit of, I think it's a bit of a splintering, uh, in, in the group happening right now. There's a larger group of, um, of municipalities called Alberta municipalities, which is all the cities, uh, villages, towns, and summer villages in Alberta. Um, and now you've got a group called the Mid-Size Mayor's Caucus, which would be Red Deer as a part of that. Basically, any city that's not Edmonton or Calgary is part of that. And now we've got another group, the Mid-Size Towns Mayors, that are just starting up. And it's, um, I think we're a part, Penhold is a part of the Mid-Size Towns uh, because it's important to be a part of things like that. But I also think that it's just, it's just splintering our, our larger voice into a smaller, less powerful voice, um, which the provincial government loves because now there's there's just more of us they can sort of siphon off in different directions. Um, but it's 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 a problem for sure. Ted mentioned like you work a lot with the communities all throughout central Alberta. Is there an example of something that you would work on, say, with like Sylvan Lake or another community um, where you would come together and make decisions or is it just kind of brainstorming or uh, working on things that you might have similar issues in your towns? Like, how does that work? So most of our services, if you, um, well, wastewater would be a, a, a good example, but so the town of Penhold is part of the South Red Deer Regional Wastewater uh, Authority. So we have uh, Olds all the way down to Red Deer along the corridor there. All We're all part of this wastewater commission. Um, we so the town of Penholes pay, pay Penhold pays a a monthly fee to the commission, which goes to the city of Red Deer eventually, where they treat our wastewater and it goes back out in the river. So big projects like that, um, drinking water. We're on well water in Penhold, but some some communities aren't, and they're on. There's the Mountain View Water Commission, which same thing is a group of communities that all get their water from Red Deer River, and they. Uh, so the reason why you do that is just because the costs are so the cost of treating wastewater is so expensive. So when you can go in with a bunch of municipalities and sort of do it for cheaper, and then the province will, will step step in with some money as well. That, that's why we do things like that. And then we're on, there, there's a few other ones, um, seniors housing. We have uh, local seniors housing groups that one representative from each municipality will be a part of. Um, yeah, a few, a few different ones. Uh, on the lighter side, what's the biggest perk that you've experienced? And do you actually have a key to the city? <laughs> We, I don't have a key to the city. I do have a key fob to the back of the town office. So when you get, <laughs> when you, when you become a, a counselor, everyone gets a key, uh, a fob to the, to the town office and into council chambers, which is in, if you're ever in our town offices in the front portion of it. Uh, but as the mayor, you get a key fob to go into the back Whoa. portion as well. So, what happens back there? <laughs> not much. Uh, <laughs> that, that's where the management team works. Uh, I have a very small office at the town of Penhold. Uh, that's back there and yeah that, that's there's really nothing there's no reason I guess I don't think I have access to any sensitive information back there oh. um, but I do get a fob uh, the cool the <laughs> coolest part is just well we we do have Penold has a really cool chain of office so if you're um, 
it was donated by a member of our community. It is a it is a giant gold chain. Yeah, uh, wow. nice. You should have worn it tonight. <laughs> you know what? I maybe I should have. It's very heavy, so I wear I wear it to formal formal occasions. Um, and then the, the honestly the coolest part is when we, we the town office is right by the high school, uh, they're connected buildings. So when I come in and the kids are all hanging out there and. Uh, we bring in the grade six classes every year to tour the town office and tour council chambers. Just kind of being a being a role model in the, in the community is probably my, the coolest part for me. Nice. And you're the the office. It's right there in the multiplex. Yeah. Too right. So you yeah. can watch all like whatever's going on, which leads me into the one thing that I. This is how you and I first met. Was I? Man, you must have been almost brand new as as mayor now that I know yeah, would have been, yeah. the timelines. But uh, the Red Deer Senior Double A Rustlers, when I was part of the group that kind of brought them into to Senior Double A hockey. I don't know if you remember Ryan Lund was on that team the first year. He had two goals and two assists and like eight press box hot dogs, I think. <laughs> but uh, that, that's something obviously that you really embraced right away too. Uh, you worked with us on uh, getting in that rink. And I actually think you were the first season ticket holder as well. So obviously anything like that, although anything happening in the community uh, is really important to you and it, yeah. you latch on to stuff like that. I love having the wrestlers in, in Penhold. The only, the only thing is they need to change their name to the Penhold wrestlers, yeah. but that uh, we'll, we'll work on that. But yeah, having, having the wrestlers come in, I mean, we're, they're out of the playoffs or the playoffs are over now, but they lost in the, in the finals to, to the generals. Um, but those games, we get four or 500 people out to our facility. Uh, we've got a beer gardens. We've got 50 fifties. We've got all the draws. It's such a fun, fun event to go to on a Saturday night. Um, yeah, I, I really love having the wrestlers in town. That is a really nice multiplex out there too. Like yeah. it's, I don't, I don't know how old it is, but it's still state of the art. Like it's, it was when it was first built in, in Pennold, it was nicer than anything that Red Deer, yeah. Red Deer yeah. had. And I probably mm. might still have. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, if you haven't been, go check it out. And that's obviously something too you push for events in because having the wrestlers there is great. I think there was a, a couple at some point, one of the world juniors or whatever was happening. There's a couple I think the, it was preseason. The, there was Gretzky, was there Yeah, we've well, had, Hinka, we've had two preseason game or pre-tournament games for the Helenka Gretzky Cup there. Um, which is something we try to get every time the event comes back to Alberta. We try to make sure we're a part of that. And um, that's, you know, that's another thing. The The kids come out and watch the hockey players. We had uh, the first year, Philip Broberg was playing on Team Sweden, Edmonton Oilers draft pick and now player. Uh, like these are these are future NHL players, right, that we're, mm-hmm. we're getting in our facility. It's awesome. Are there any other events, I guess, say focusing on summer um which hopefully we'll get soon but are there any other events that are coming up in penhold that you're really excited about the world is the world's shortest marathon happening again the, That's yeah my favorite. mayor yeah. mike's mini marathon will be back again so we do our fall festival in september which is our our exactly. biggest event of the year uh we used to do in penhold penhold days in june which if you follow if you follow the local parade route around uh, central alberta there's a ton of communities that do their um, their Penhold days, Black Falls day, whatever they call it, uh, in June, because most of us became towns around the same time in, in mm. June. Um, so we, we decided one year, a few years back, we were going to push ours to September to sort of get away from all the, the crowd of, of things. So we have the Merrimack's mini marathon. We've got the craft beer fest. We've got, um, a parade. We've got a ton of things happen that week. And that is by far our biggest event. Normally, the last few years, we have done a bull riding event in May. And unfortunately, this year, we're not doing it, but it will be back next year, and it'll be even bigger than it was before. All right. but, yeah. it's, um, it, it's an outdoor an outdoor event at the multiplex. Um, it, we're, we're already planning for next year. It's going to be an awesome thing. So, so okay, I, I haven't heard of this uh, mini marathon, Mayor Mike's mini marathon. How does that work? So it is a uh, 200 and... 50 meter marathon with a donut stop in the middle. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's sort of, it came about as an idea. I had, I saw an article about a marathon. The Krispy this, Kreme. Um, I've, I've, I may have seen this. Well, the one race. I saw was a beer one and that was the, oh, where yeah. the, the idea originally started, but it's hard to, I mean, we are a very family oriented community. It's hard to really plan something like that. 
around beer and we do i mean it does lead into the craft beer i was gonna say fest anyway beer there. It's, um yeah. so we went with the idea of okay mini donuts and lemonade instead at the at the halfway mark and there's a there's a theme every year so you dress up you win a prize for best costume you win a prize for the fastest time um yeah it's just a fun it takes about it's 250 meters. It doesn't take very what long. Your, what was your time last last year? <laughs> I don't remember my time. I think it was quick. <laughs> I I really pushed at the end. Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine has won it two years in a row, and I really thought I could I could take him this year, and I did not. The donut the donut held me held me back. So Penhole Days you said is in September. So something uh, for something for everyone to to look out for. And I think we're gonna have to go because I I mean Kevin might set a new record for that. Yeah, marathon. we should have you guys out for it. Yeah. yeah. Anything with marathon, I'm usually pretty game for. Good. So. Yeah, and anything uh, with Downton Abbey doesn't matter. Yeah. Anything yeah. with donut, I'm I'm usually pretty game <laughs> yeah. for. And your your entry into the marathon gets you free entry into the craft beer fest too. Oh. Oh, so right like after no you're done, yeah, you walk over. We have breweries from all over Alberta come for it. Uh, it's a, it's a good night. So Mike, what's uh, what's next for you? Um, obviously, currently in in local politics, have you um, have you thought about going into provincial or federal politics? Have you thought about doing something else? Have you thought about staying where you're at, or or is that all is yeah. that all too private? I, I, I love being the mayor of Penhold there. Um, I love, I love being active in the community. I love politics. Timing is everything in politics. So there, there definitely are other things I'd like to do. Um, but timing is everything and, and you, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of it when it's, when the timing's right. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. <laughs> My uh, other question is, I'm a big uh, Parks and Rec fan. Yeah. The TV show. So that's what I'm envisioning local politics is like. You like know what? You're just always trying to 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 get stuff done. And meanwhile, you're 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 having all these town hall meetings where you're <laughs> where there's there's absurd arguments from from a few folks, the regular folks that keep complaining about stuff. Do you guys have any of those? I don't want you to name anybody, obviously, but do you have a few characters in the in the town that that uh, that challenge you on a on a day to day basis? Oh, absolutely! Like there, there are, and I and and I, God bless them. I love them. They're great people. But there are people in in the community that I'm on a first name basis with, only because of my role as the mayor and the questions that they want to ask me. Uh, and the great, like when you watch Parks and Rec, when they have those town halls and and they they're looking for community feedback. There's a lot of truth in that too. I mean, the, the questions you can get asked or the, the way people will, will want to take a town hall sometimes, not everybody, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting. Is there anybody, I know local politics, obviously way different than party politics, like you said. Um, but is there anybody that you would consider like a role model in the politics world? Or is there anybody that you would look up to? Not, you don't have to name your political uh, allegiances, but is there anybody that you look at and think, yeah, that guy's doing it right or, or female? Yeah, there are. And I've learned this, uh, especially in the last three years. So I'm involved with an organization called the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And through that, I've met municipal politicians from around Canada and federal MPs and provincial MLAs or MPPs, um, from all different parties. And, and it's shown me that there are a lot of good people in politics. Um, in different parties. There's also a lot of, a lot of really bad people in politics, but there are some really good people that I, um, that I consider role models. They might not know it to me, but they're people that I look up to and, and that I, you know, I, I hope I can be the politician that they are, um, when I'm maybe when I'm better at it or when I'm, when I'm, when I, when if, I if I get the opportunity to do it, uh, on a full-time basis, I, I hope I can keep that. I will, I will throw a shout out, to my my mom, who is probably my biggest role model in politics, uh, who always keeps me grounded, and she's she's taught me a lot. Uh, so she would be my biggest role model. But there are a lot of good people, uh, both in Alberta and Canada, that um, it, it's important to to recognize them. So I, I try to whenever I can. Well, I think we I think we need to talk about the most important thing because we are 
at a, in a barber shop. And I think we'll uh, thank you to Stephen for giving you a nice uh, beard trim right before, which is always a nice relaxing thing. But I know is is that one of your signature things is being the, like the mayor with the beard? Because I know I know for me, like having a beard is a big thing. And you said it's been well over a decade since you've shaved so is that almost like is do you like do you like being the mayor with the beard is that kind of your thing you know what it is it's become sort of my thing when i ran as a counselor i had buttons made up pins that were my silhouetted face with the beard and sunglasses and it was hashtag mike for mayor was the was the pin and yeah i'm i'm uh, i'm well known until i cut it just recently, I had the the second longest mayor, beard uh, of any mayor in Alberta. <laughs> the, can uh, you track that? <laughs> well, I track it. <laughs> you, you, try, you have a spreadsheet. And, and Tim Wilson out of Delver and has me beat, uh-huh. but he was the only one. Were you calling guys like Gors? Were you calling mayors up and be like, "Hey, how long's your beard?" Okay, <laughs> yeah. And then you send me a picture. Up. That's the problem. Unless they trim theirs. You can never really catch up. Yeah, right? no. And if you ever, if you're ever out in Delburn and see Mayor Tim, his is down to. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's down to about probably my belly button, um, so it's easy to tell he's the longest one, but it's something that yeah, it it sort of helps me stand out. I guess would be a good way to put it. Uh, helps helps people remember you. And is that like a personal? I don't know what the word tick for you because i know even i came in i was like oh, i kind of screwed up my beard too obviously something you're particular about because you've been going coming to a uh, red stag or the one when it was downtown for a long time too and it's kind of one of those like you had to you had to give up a little trust tonight because steven's never done your yeah. beard before yes. yeah benji has been my guy since he was in the red deer downtown location and now i i go to sylvan lake um I've learned a lot about how to just leave it alone and let him fix things. Cause I, the same way I used to try to trim it at home and I don't have the, you know, when you're lifting your head up and doing yeah. one of those, yeah, it doesn't work out very good. So. So do you feel confident you have the beard vote locked up next election? I think so. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, when the three of us move, yeah, right. we'll to Penhold, <laughs> grow yeah, a beard. <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll, you'll have our vote, but is that, uh, you know, doing the, whether it's just in the central Alberta community in general, it's, again, I think, uh, you know, you probably have the same thing in Penhold where you're going to the same place all the time, seeing the same person. Uh, so really like, I'm trying to give uh, Red Stag a plug here, but having places like this where you can go, obviously huge for, for any community. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any, whether it's a coffee shop or a barber shop or somewhere where you walk in and, and you, some, you know, you know, you know, the person there, you say, hi, how are you doing? Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, it's that's the beauty of small small towns, right? And I know Red Deer is a hundred some thousand. It's still a small town. Um, you know, you don't you don't have that in in cities or anything. So, have you ever had, been at the barber shop or anything and have someone come in? And now again, I'm picturing the movies, right? Where after the big high school football game, everyone goes <laughs> to the barber shop. And have you ever just been stuck in a chair and have some other patron just lay into you about something? Has that ever happened? It has not happened at a barber shop, but it has happened at the pen holder, which yeah. is our our local bar in yeah, pen holder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I apologize for that night. I <laughs> right? had too much yeah. to drink. <laughs> yeah. You don't even live in pen yeah. yeah. no, I just really wanted to give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> it was that important to me. That happens a lot more than you would think yeah. in there. But. And was it was just over politics, basically? Like yeah, it's always uh, mo- uh, uh, Pendleton's a really great, great community. There's most people are very respectful, um, and even when they want to talk, I'm always happy to talk. But yeah, you're you know people want to talk about why don't we have a pool in the community? Why do why do we do this? Why don't we do this? What uh, um, and that's part of the job too. At the end of the day, so and why don't you have a pool that's, in the community? Yeah, so let's the pool pools are very expensive. <laughs> uh, there's 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 not any community that I know of that makes money having a pool. You can't make money, you know, on a toonie swim, right? When you, mm-hmm. a nice surface, at least you can charge out for a, for a reasonable rate and, and sort of make some money back off that. But you, you cannot make money having a pool. What about water slides? You know what? We could do it. I, I do think like an outdoor pool makes sense in a small community. Obviously you can't use it year round, right? but it's far lower maintenance costs. Um, you know, the Abbey Center in Black Falls is a good example. They have that, that beautiful little water park pool area outside that would be, you know, I, I don't really know for sure, I guess, but probably far cheaper than the Collicut center would be for red deer to operate. 
So I guess on that note, if you had, if you had like, car- <laughs> on that note, you heard it here yeah. first. Yeah. Mayor yeah. Mike is promising an outdoor yeah. pool. Depend old. Uh, no, but if you had, if there was one thing on your list that you had the budget for, the logistics were figured out. Like, what's your dream thing to bring to Penhold that it that it doesn't have? And maybe it is a pool, just so people leave you alone at the Penholder. You know what? If if, if money was no option, it probably would. Well, no, money was no object, it probably would be a pool. Uh, just because I know having such a young community, how, how packed it would be all the time. If we didn't have to worry about how we were going to pay for it and how we were going to fund it and maintain it, um, it would be a pool. Oh, I hope we can make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> Clip this. We need yeah, some, yeah. we need some big money Start investors fundraising. to move to Penhold. Should we get a, a, yeah. kick, a Kickstarter yeah. going for the Penhold pool? Yeah. yeah. Just wait till the brewery bowling alley comes in and oh starts just God. raking oh, in the yeah. money. A, bre- a brewery the f- slash bowling alley. Well, yeah, the fundraisers we could have for the pool there. Right. <laughs> So we've talked, we've talked uh, for me at least at nauseum about politics because I'm not a politics guy. Let's talk about just Mike, the, the person, right? We, which we probably could have done right off the hop, but obviously too, uh, married, married with kids, like you said, been in, in Penhold like, like your whole life. Yeah. Married, uh, kids. I, my whole family basically is in the Penhold area. My, my wife is from BC, but she has, uh, her dad's out in Penhold now and then she has family all over. BC as well still, um, you know, uh, big baseball fan. My, my kids are all in sports. So that keeps me, keeps me pretty busy. We have a uh, uh, six, 16 year old plays baseball, a 14 year old who skis competitively, a uh, six year old who plays baseball and gymnastics, four year old who does dance. And we tried lacrosse this year. It didn't work out, but she's only four and we're going to give it another shot next year. So so how do you follow well, We're kind of going back to Paul, but how do you find time with that? All, all the kids, a couple who were, I guess, born in office, if that's a term, I don't, I don't know, but like, <laughs> well, born while you were yeah, in office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know the terms. I don't know, but that's obviously, <laughs> obviously a big yeah. juggling act that's grown over the last couple of years since you first stepped in as mayor. Yeah. I, I have an awesome wife and an awesome family. Um, you know, my, my sisters are two of my best friends. My mom lives across the street from me. Um, my, our, our, uh, my kid's grandpa lives two blocks down the road. We've sort of got a built in network that, that, uh, we all help each other out. So it's, we're, I'm pretty fortunate in Penhold for sure. If you could guess like the population of Penhold is what, like three, 4,000 people. We are doing our census right now. And I think we will come out to just over 4,000. Just over four. How many of those people do you think you know in Penhold? Mm. Like, like fifty percent, seventy-five, ten percent. Like, I have no like idea. I, I, like, maybe names, I I wouldn't go that high, but do but people, I'm I'm comfortable saying I would I would know uh, at least fifty percent of the community when I see them. Uh, that's the benefit, hey, of yeah. of having a smaller smaller community. Yeah, and like you just get to see people out and about. You get to to enjoy watching the game with a couple people. You get to enjoy going to your, your child's sporting event and meet, yeah. meet people that way. And yeah, like in, in Red Deer, I probably know 1%. I feel like 2%. you know more people than the average Red Deer resident would too. Okay, 2%. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, I mean, that's, I'm just saying that's the benefit yeah. of oh, living yeah. in, a, in, in, in Penhold. Yeah, that, that's the beauty of a small town, right? Um, I mean, like, it's a... This was back when Penhold was smaller, but I, I remember growing up, we were, me and some friends were throwing crab apples at cars as they would drive by and oh, yeah. hiding, hiding oh, in the yeah. trees. <laughs> and uh, so we didn't, we didn't know this at the time, but one of the cars that we drove by uh, saw us, knew who we were, didn't stop or do anything. Well, that night we're sitting around and having dinner and this car pulls into the driveway and sure enough, it's someone that saw me doing it and just came by to tell my dad that, hey, you're... <laughs> Your kid and his friends are out throwing crab yeah. apples at cars. Your son's being right? a yeah. little shit. So it's the it's the beauty of a small town that you know we were everyone was looking out for for everyone, right? Yeah. Well, I think that leads me to a great last question here, because again, we're we're always looking for the tea. We're in the barber's chair. What is the because and there's a statue like growing up. What is the most trouble you got in in Penhold? Was it throwing crab apples, or you don't have to incriminate yourself? No, no. either, but I. Uh, Probably one of the the funniest things. I I got suspended for fighting a few times in school, but um, I I blew up a pencil in the microwave <laughs> in school when when I was young, and it was while I was 
I can't remember which grade I was in, but I was, I was picked to be a supervisor for a younger grade <laughs> while the teachers were doing stuff. And while the teacher was out of the classroom, I put a pencil in the microwave Just, to see what would happen. I guess I don't was, really know why. Did you know? So you didn't know? I did not know it was going to blow up. Yeah. Um, I, would, and it, I wouldn't have guessed that it either. blew up. It no. totally disintegrated. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the last time I heat up my pencils. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Do it the old fashioned way over like a wood burning stove yeah. Yeah. or something. And hey, but you still, that obviously didn't follow you. You still made no, it. No, no. You know what? I became, I became a good kid. I spent a lot of my math class in high school in the hallway, but oh, I turned out all right. You probably became like the coolest supervisor for those younger yeah, kids. The kids yeah, the kids in that class thought I was awesome. And they grew up to <laughs> yeah. vote for you, so they, it worked out. I was actually yeah. very shrewd. Great campaigning. They were very quick to rat me out, though, I will tell you that. They they did not waste any time telling the teacher. Oh, the narcs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going back to Penhold, because we were talking about uh, the beauty of it being a small community, is population growth like a big goal for the town of Penhold? Because I know everyone assumes any small town, they just want to get bigger. Is it more like maintaining the, the population and just enhancing the community for people who are already there? You know what? Our, our biggest goal, by... <laughs> By nature, a community is is looking to grow. I, I guess it helps you, it helps you attract more business. It helps you um, get more amenities for your community. So yeah, we're not looking to be a, a hundred thousand people city by any means, but uh, we do, we do want to get to a certain size where where we're a more attractive place for larger businesses to come and set up their their warehouses or their factories or whatever, uh, just so we can have more people living and working in Penhold. So. Um, growth growth for, for Penhold is important. But now you have a Burger King, so that almost feels like the pinnacle. You know what? The yeah. Burger King is just outside yeah. of Penhold. Oh. Yeah, but we do oh. have a Dairy Queen and a yep. Tim Hortons, and uh, there's hopefully a, some other stuff coming soon. We, we've we've had a few tire kickers on, on a brewery. Nothing yet. We've got the best car wash in, in Alberta. Oh, um, okay. If you're, ever, if you're ever driving through, go to Sud Station. It's the, by far the now. best car wash around, but... All right, well, Mike, just Mike, we'll uh, we'll let you go here. But thanks uh, for being our second guest, our first, I guess, non barbershop guest on a barbershop talk. Uh, you know what? I, again, I said we met years ago. We always run into each other, which is always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on here and uh, sharing a little bit of mayor gossip. Yeah, and thank thank you guys so much for having me. This was great. Uh, you know, any anytime you need to you need some gossip about central Alberta, just, just hit me up. I'd be glad to share. We'll see you when we're uh, breaking ground on that pool. Yeah. Pool and fall festival. Yeah, Come I'm for the fall mini festival. Marathon right yeah. Here, so oh, yeah. yeah. Eating a couple donuts, wow. running 250 meters. That sounds like an excellent way to spend my summer. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again to Red Stag Barbershop and uh, we'll see you all next time on the next edition of Barbershop Talk. Oh dear.